muted. Ja, rigtig hjertelig velkommen til vores webinar omkring User Awareness. Jeg hedder Christian Schmidt fra Doorware, og jeg præsenterer det her i samarbejde med vores leverandør, som hedder Wombat Security Technologies. Og jeg har Terry Conroy fra, fra Wombat med på linjen. Terry, are you there? Yes, good morning all. Uh, I am here. <laughs> That sounds great. Uh, Terry, I'm going to do the introduction here in Danish, give you a good opportunity to learn some local language. <laughs> <laughs> And after that, uh, I'll switch over to you. Is that all right? That's fantastic. Awesome. I'm going to mute you while, uh, while we're doing this so you can drink some coffee. Okay. So, som sagt igen, rigtig hjertelig velkommen. Uh, lige lidt uh, generelt information, så bliver det her webinar optaget, sådan så at alle får det tilsendt bag, så I, så I kan gense, hvad det er. Um, og alle er på, på mute, så I kan drikke kaffe og, og snakke så meget, som, som, uh, som I har lyst til. Uh, nede i det her panel til højre, der er der et punkt, der hedder questions. Så hvis det er, at I har nogle spørgsmål undervejs, så er det bare at stille med et panel, og så skal vi se, om I kan få, få svaret på dem alle sammen her. Uh, vi kommer til at køre på den her måde, at jeg laver en kort præsentation her på dansk, og så stiller jeg videre til min kollega Terry, som på engelsk vil sige en lille smule om firmaet Wombat Security, og så ellers lave en reel uh, praktisk præsentation af, hvordan uh, man laver sådan noget brugende, bruger awareness. Så det burde være det, så lad os uh, kaste os over det med det samme. Så grunden til, at vi laver det her, det er fordi, at rigtig mange af vores brugere bruger rigtig meget, eller vores kunder bruger rigtig meget tid på at, at, at implementere sikkerhedsløsninger i virksomheden, men meget ofte så bliver en af de mest åbenlyse sikkerhedsløsninger overset, nemlig det at uddanne brugerne, sådan så at brugerne kan kende forskel på godt og skidt og ved, hvordan de skal opføre sig. Og når jeg siger opfører sig, så mener jeg selvfølgelig opfører sig på den måde, at man øh, ved og kan spotte, hvor der kan være problemer, og kan opføre sig på en måde, der gør, at man udsætter sig selv og virksomheden for færrest mulige sikkerhedsmæssige risici. Øh, og det vil sige, at øh, hele baggrunden i det her, det er, at det er simpelthen ikke nok at håbe, at brugerne gør det rigtigt. Man skal rent faktisk have en strategi for at uddanne dem, sådan så at de kan blive et af de bedste forsvarsværker, med hensyn til IT-sikkerheden i virksomheden, og det er derfor, jeg kalder det her bruger firewall. Hvis vi, øh, hvis vi lige tager, starter med et praktisk eksempel her, så kan vi se på min inbox, at jeg fik øh, to e-mails i morges. En, og det her er helt tilfældigt, det er bare nogle, jeg lige har fået. Et fra et dansk firma, som laver udstillingssystemer, som vi obviously ikke har noget at gøre med. Og så en anden en her fra Lisa Carroll. Som, øh, som mener, at man skal klikke her for at, øh, at tage nogle kilo. Og øh, for de fleste sikkerhedsfolk vil det sikkert være meget obvious, at man lige kan pege på den her, og så kigge på, nå, okay, det ser relativt troværdigt ud, selvom den her, det her link måske er lidt funny. Men at den her, det er nok noget, man skal kigge på, og hvis man peger på den, så ser det også lidt underligt ud. Men der er rigtig mange brugere, som ikke vil vide det. Så så snart de her begynder at komme på, på noget, der, der minder om noget, man har noget med at gøre, øh, eller på dansk eller noget andet, så vil der være mange, der for eksempel klikker på dem, og der har vi starten på problemet. Så øh, hvis vi springer tilbage til præsentationen her, så kunne jeg godt lige tænke mig at først gennemgå øh, agendaen for, for det, vi skal snakke om i dag. Så allerførst, hvad er awareness-træning? 
Og er det rent faktisk en god idé? Og det er klart, det er det, for ellers ville vi ikke holde den her præstation. Hvordan relaterer awareness-træning til generel malware og for eksempel ransomware? Og hvordan relaterer awareness-træning til større øh, frameworks som SANS 20 Critical Security Controls og ISO 7002? Så har man ligesom et, en god, eller nogle gode kasser at, at putte det ind i. Så vil jeg snakke lidt om fremgangsmåden for awareness-træning, altså den proces, man bruger, når man implementerer awareness-træning. Og så har vi øh, Terrys præsentation til sidst. For dem, der ikke kender Wombat Security, så har jeg lige taget Gartner's Magic Quadrant frem for Awareness Computer Based Training. Og der kan vi se, at Wombat, training, eller Wombat Security er nogle af dem, der ligger i øverste højre hjørne, og det vil sige, at det er nogle af markedslederne her. Ikke at det nødvendigvis er sådan, så man skal ligge heroppe, før man, før man passer til, til, det, øh, til, det, øh, skal man sige, til det punkt fordi der er mange af de her produkter, der er gode, men det, at man ligger heroppe, er en garanti for, at det er et af de rigtig gode produkter på markedet. Når vi snakker om awareness training, og ligesom skal prøve at forklare, hvad det er, så er det vigtigste ting, at øh, det er en proces, som er kontinuerligt, altså noget, man bestandigt gør, og så det er typisk noget, der foregår via et online, altså sådan et SAS-system, software as a service. Og, og med kontinuerligt, det kan jeg simpelthen ikke understrege nok, fordi øh, nogle af vores øh, brugere rapporterer tilbage til os, at øh, jamen, de bruger øh, nogle lokale leverandører, som øh, laver noget awareness træning en eller to gange om året. Og det er langt fra tilstrækkeligt. Så hele konceptet her, det er, at man konstant og målrettet for, for, forsøger at finde ud af, hvor er der manglende øh, kan man sige, huller i folks viden, og så arbejder aktivt på at udfylde de huller. Så derfor starter man typisk i det her tilfælde med en test af brugernes viden. Det der hedder på amerikansk hedder assessment, og i det her tilfælde er det jo så typisk den manglende viden, man er efter. Og det gør man ved online at sende et spørgeskema ud, som man beder folk om at svare på. Og så laver man et forløb, hvor man laver målrettet uddannelse i sådan nogle små, korte øh, intervaller eller, eller forløb, sådan så folk kan holde ud. Det er altså ikke sådan noget med, at man skal sidde flere timer eller dage. Det er sådan et forløb på typisk et uh, 10 minutter kvarter, hvor man får uh, kan man sige, noget målrettet viden, som man også kan passe ind i sin arbejdsdag. Uh, så er der så typisk i forbindelse med det her en online test samtidig med, om uddannelsen er forstået. Og det fører så typisk til en score. Og der kan man sige, hvis det er, at, at testen ikke, eller scoren ikke er høj nok, jeg så kan få muligheden for brugerne en forklaring på, hvorfor det er, og muligheden for at svare på spørgsmålene igen. Og så tester man så også virkningen af uddannelsen ved at lave nogle, kan man sige, simulerede phishing attacks, eller USB-kampagner, eller lignende, hvor man sender en, en testmail ud i virksomheden, som er en godartet phishing-mail. Og hvis folk så rent faktisk klikker på den, jamen så kan de blive involveret i endnu et kursusforløb, eller også kan de få lov til at rapportere ind til IT-afdelingen, at det her det er et phishing attack, og på den måde hjælpe. Øhm, så laver man mere målbar uddannelse, så det er ikke bare noget, der kun drejer sig om phishing, men drejer sig om alle aspekter af IT-sikkerhed. Og så lader man, som sagt, de her brugere rapportere tilbage øh, med, med, med phishing attacks, og både de simulerede og så de rigtige phishing attacks skal rapporteres ind. Og på den måde så både uddanner man og lader brugerne være vagthund i organisationen. Så er der en, en, en række ting, som er en almindelig vigtig karakter, øh, nemlig det, at man gør uddannelsen underholdende. Og det kan man gøre ved hjælp af det, der på engelsk hedder gamification, altså man laver et lille spil ud af uddannelsen. Øh, man kan sørge for at gøre det inspirerende ved, at hver deltager kan se sine egne resultater og ligesom se, om man bliver bedre over tid. Øh, og det fører så til, at brugerne rent faktisk bliver en del af løsningen på IT-sikkerhedsproblemet, og ikke en, en, en direkte del af problemet. Og til sidst, og det kan jeg ikke øh, understrege nok også, det er, det her det er jo uddannelse for øh, brugere i bred forstand. Det er også meget vigtigt, at man husker at adressere specialist- og rollespecifik uddannelse for både ledelsen i virksomheden, og også teknikerne, altså selve IT-teknikerne. Lad os kigge videre på og se, om awareness-træning rent faktisk er en god idé. Og det er jo næsten fuldstændig opgivet, når jeg stiller det spørgsmål, at det er det. 
Og jeg har bare taget udgangspunkt i, i tre forskellige tal, øhm, og jeg har hernede specificeret, hvad det er for nogle kilder, vi har brugt til at, at underbygge de her tal med. Men øh, generelt set kan man sige, at den pris, som awareness-træning koster, betaler sig selv hjem ca. 50 gange. Og det er klart, at det er et, et hæftigt return on investment. Så det er virkelig en bevisligt god idé at bruge energi og midler på, på awareness-træning. Øhm, det viser sig også, at 95% af alle sikkerhedsbrister, øh, som blev undersøgt her, øh, viser sig at være baseret på menneskelige fejltagelser. Og det er jo selvfølgelig ikke særlig overraskende, at folk bliver udsat for noget, de ikke rigtig kan vurdere eller gøre noget, der er usmart, og derfor bliver de ufrivilligt en del af problemet, og det er lige præcis det, vi forsøger at adressere her. Øh, og så kan man sige, at der findes en række målinger for at sige, når man så har gennemført awareness-træningen, hvor meget bedre bliver awareness så? Og der kan man sige, at det gennemsnitlige tal for at løfte awareness, øh, det ligger på øh, små, øh, små 65 procent, øh, men varierer imellem 50 procent og helt op til 95 procent. Så det er relativt hurtigt, altså for eksempel i løbet af et års tid, at flytte brugernes awareness fra meget lav, til vældig høj. Hvis vi kigger lidt nærmere på uh, awareness-træning og så relation til malware, så er det sådan så, at awareness-træning dækker rigtig mange forskellige ting. Så uh, det er ikke bare, når man får en mail. Det er også for eksempel, når brugerne er ude at rejse, hvordan skal de så opføre sig? For eksempel, når man slutter sig til et ukendt wifi access punkt i lufthavnen eller på hotellet. Det er også, hvordan man skal hvordan man skal gebære sig, når man er på sociale medier og bliver kontaktet af en person, som er kendt skråstrej ukendt. Som sagt, mail er en hyppig del. Det kan også være, hvis man for eksempel finder en USB-nøgle et eller andet sted, skal man bare tage og proppe den i computeren eller hvad? Uanset hvad der står på, der måtte være i den. Og også ting som for eksempel, hvordan laver man sikre passwords og vedligeholder dem. Og skal man bruge samme password på sin Facebook-konto, som man skal bruge på sin firma-konto? Svaret er obviously nej. En stor del af det her, det er også, hvordan relaterer det her sig til behandling af personfølsomme oplysninger. Det, som er grundlaget for den nye persondataforordning. Og her, har vi, her adresserer vi specifikt det, der hedder behandlingssikkerhed, som findes i artikel 32 i persondataforordningen. Det har vi en, en, en specifik webinar om i eftermiddag og senere i næste uge, og det er I velkommen til at deltage i også. Hvis man skal prøve at kigge lidt på, hvordan awareness-træningen relaterer til større framework, så findes der et framework, som hedder 20 Critical Security Controls og kommer fra en amerikansk organisation, som hedder SANS. Hvis det er, at I ikke kender den, så kan jeg absolut på det varmeste anbefale jer at gå ind og kigge på et link her. Og jeg har lige taget et skærmbillede frem. Hvis man går ind og leder efter 20 Critical Security Controls, så kan man komme ind her, og de her Critical Security Controls, de gennemgår i detaljer, hvordan man i praksis skal lave et framework for øh, at forbedre IT-sikkerhed kontinuerligt. Og her er øh, awareness-træning en aktiv del. Øhm, nu er det ikke bare noget, der foregår øh, online og på, på, øh, på elektroniske medier. Man kan faktisk også via Wombat få mulighed for at få trygt øh, artikler og plakater og billeder og alt muligt sådan så, at awareness-træning også bliver noget, som man møder hver dag på øh, opslagstavlen i, i virksomheden. Men øh, i SANS 20 Critical Security Controls, der har man simpelthen en definition af, hvordan man laver awareness-træning, og den følger øh, Wombat Security også nøje. Og hvis man skal relatere det her til ISO 27001-2, øh, toeren, kan man sige, ISO 27001 er det framework, man kan blive certificeret efter, hvorimod ISO 27002 er, kan man sige, den praktiske beskrivelse af, hvad skal man gøre for at implementere de her kontroller i, i virkelighedens verden, 
Og i det annex, der hedder 7.2.2, der står der simpelthen, at man skal gennemføre awareness-programmer. Så det er ikke noget, der bare er grebet ud af luften. Så for lige at øh, afslutte her, så øh, går det i alt den enkelte ud på, at man vurderer øh, brugernes færdigheder, og på basis af den viden, man får her, laver man en målrettet uddannelse, og den understreger man ved at teste, om den uddannelse virker, og så måler man, hvor godt den har virket, og så fortsætter man det her i en, 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 en cyklus. Det var det. Um, lad os se en gang. Der er ikke nogen spørgsmål, som jeg kan se det i øjeblikket, så jeg gør simpelthen det, at jeg giver... Uh, yeah, I hear then visa. Terry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, uh, Christian. Good morning again. <laughs> Great. So, Terry, I'm going to make you the presenter now. Fantastic. There you go. If you could share your screen. Super. Uh, Terry? Sure. Yes. yes. Terry, you are online and ready to go. Okay, you can see my screen? Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank you for the uh, introduction, uh, Christian. Um, I got, <laughs> I got uh, even though I don't speak Danish, I do speak Dutch and I speak German. So there is a similar kind of overlap into Danish language there as well. So I did get most of it. Um, What I understood from your presentation, it's all about why this is important. And what I would like to add to that is the importance is changing the behavior of the employee. And that is the way we can reduce risk. So I've only got one slide to show, and then I'm going to head straight over into a demo. So who, is Wombat or who are Wombat Security? Um, first of all, it's important to know that we spun out of Carnegie Mellon University. Um, so our background is education. Um, the founders of the company were actual professors of Carnegie Mellon University. Now what happened back in 2007 is Carnegie Mellon University was asked to perform by the US government to perform research on the impact of fishing on the US federal government and the US Army. Now, out of that research, the company Wombat was founded. And the learning science principles is something that we integrate within our platform. Um, learning science principles weren't developed by Wombat. They were developed back in the 60s. And these are principles on how to achieve the highest knowledge retention and the highest acceptance of training within specifically an adult education environment. So if we look at some of the learning science principles, uh, for example, training modules need to be bite-sized or not too long. So all our training modules are between 5 and 15 minutes. Training modules need to be interactive because you learn by doing. So all our training modules interact with the user. They have to read the text on the screen, which is active learning instead of listening or to a video or, or that is considered passive learning. So active learning through engagement with the user and some of our modules are also gamified where we make it fun for the user so the acceptance level is a lot higher. The use of teachable moments so when a user does something in an assessment and I will come to this in a minute That is what we call a teachable moment. When someone has done something they shouldn't have done, they are open to learning. And at that moment, it is important to give them the right message. Um, Christian already touched on our Gartner position um, as the most visionary leader in the quadrant. Uh, what I would like to add to this is Gartner um, brought out the quadrant back in 2014. And back in 2014, we were positioned 
as the most visionary leader and we have actually retained that position for the last three years so we are continuously looking at improving our products developing new modules updating modules keeping up to speed with the current threat environment so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over into the platform and show you a demo of what we do. Now, as Christian said, there's a continuous training program where we start off with assessments. Now, we supply two types of assessments. One is the knowledge assessments, where we measure what the current security knowledge is of your employees. And the second assessments are behavioral assessments. And this is where we look at how your users will behave when they receive a potential threat, either by USB or by phishing email. So if we look at the knowledge assessments. We supply 10 basic knowledge assessments, and these are default knowledge assessments that we have developed containing questions on IT security. So as you can see, they're to do with specific security uh, subjects, or there's the broad security assessments. Now, if I click on the eyeball here, I can show you what an assessment looks like. Um, so in this case, the question is, choose the best answer. You accidentally leave sensitive personal files in a friend's office, etc., etc. Choose the right answer. Now, I'm just going to guess here. I guessed correct. <laughs> but even though I guess the correct answer, the system will also will immediately give me feedback and this is another learning science principle always provide feedback always provide immediate feedback so even if I get the question wrong me <laughs> I'm just guessing correct answers now when I get a question wrong it will give me feedback as well now all these assessments are available in over 27 different languages. So for example, German, we support currently 27 different languages. And good news here is that in our release next month in May, we will be adding Danish language and Finnish language. So for, for our Danish customers, the language will be added in May. So what can you do with an assessment? If I select this assessment and if I assign that to my users, the first thing I need to do is give the assessment a name, a start date, and when the assessment is due. Then I will set reminders during the period that the assessment is due on the 30th this month. Uh, Terry? Yes? Can I ask you a question here? Yes. I noticed that it says 55 questions. I'm wondering, is it possible to decide how many questions you want to include in an assessment? Yes, you can build custom assessments. We have uh, 10 default assessments, and our training is linked to these 10 default assessments. But you are free to develop your own assessments, and I will show that following, uh, following this. Uh, obviously, I kind of knew that, but I just wanted to stress that. If people are a little worried that this is going to take a lot of time, you can basically um, uh, choose yes. to go for a smaller assessment if you don't want to do a big one. Okay. The reason Sorry I use the, the yeah the reason I use the fifty five uh, question assessment for the demo is to show the auto enrollment. So yeah. let me show you auto enrollment. This is where we link the training to the assessment. Um, so based on the assessment, we can automatically enroll the employee onto the right training. So, and as you can see, the 55 question assessment uh, is made up of different categories. So for example, the category on building safe passwords, there are five questions in there on this topic. What we do here is if the user scores 80% or less on this topic, they will automatically be assigned the in-depth training on passwords. 
there are 10 questions on protecting and disposing of data securely. And if they score 80% or less on this topic, they will automatically be assigned the PII, or Personal Identifiable Information Training, and the Data Protection and Destruction Training. So what we do next, we'll give the training a name, a due date for the training, and we select the user groups within our company that need this assessment. Click on Submit, and these users will receive a notification that they've been assigned an assessment. If they fail the assessment, so if they score 80% or below, and of course that figure can be uh, set by yourself, so if you want a certain topic to achieve 100%, you can modify that within the platform. So they will receive a notification that they've been assigned an assessment. Now all notifications in the platform can be modified. So for example, in this case, they would have received the cyber strength assignment notification. You can edit each notification and customize that to your customers, uh, to, your, um, to your company standard. So you can add your own logo, you can add your own text, and from May, even do it in your own language. So all notifications will be in Danish as well. The cyber strength questions, this is what uh, Christian just asked, are all pulled from our central database. And our central database has over 170 questions on cybersecurity. Now you can create your own assessments based on this database. So you can make a 10 question assessment on a specific topic. You can also add new questions to the database. So you can customize questions. So for example, um, add a question, do you like drawer feedback? Mm. I'll make it a true or fa false question. I'll add it to a specific category and we'll do an image answer. We'll add the drawer image. This is just to show you how easy it is to create a custom uh, question. So of course that is true. Save and the question is added to the database. Now this is what the question will look like. True or false? Do you like drawer? False? Hmm. <laughs> so that's very straightforward. <laughs> that is just a fantastic example, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows you how easy it is to add your own questions. And our customers use this to uh, assess their own employees on, for example, the health and safety regulations within the organization and to see where training is necessary in that area. So you can expand and use the platform and the knowledge assessments within the platform for your own assessments within the company. It's very flexible. So that's assessments and uh, using assessments to automatically enroll users on training. The next thing I'm going to show is the behavioral assessments or threat sim phishing assessments. Now this is where an employee will receive an assessment email and what we will do is we'll see how they behave or how they act when they re receive a potential phishing email. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you a top-level report of what you would like to see within your organization. Um, so I'm going to focus on the clicks within emails. So this is a, an example of a company that has been running phishing assessments on a monthly basis throughout the organization. And what you see here is that when we started assessing the users, about 62% 
of the employees clicked on links within emails. Now, through training, education, and awareness, we have achieved a change in behavior and a downward trend in the amount of clicks within emails. So at the end of the year here, we can see that only 10% of the employees are clicking on links or opening attachments within emails. Now, 10% is still a relatively high figure. If you look at a company of 5,000 employees, it's still 500 employees that are clicking on emails. So we still need to focus on those 10% users and reassess them and re-educate them. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a phishing campaign within the organization. So if I click on new campaign, there's three types of phishing campaigns or phishing assessments that we support. One is the drive-by campaign, number two is the data entry campaign, and number three are the attachment campaigns. Now the difference is a drive-by campaign is where the user receives an email with a link and we assess if they click on that link. The second one is a, a data entry phishing campaign. In this campaign, they will receive a form and we will ask them to fill in information such as user ID, passwords, credit card information. So we assess if they enter that information into the form. And of course, we don't store that information, we just report back that they have filled in the information. And attachment campaigns, this is where we assess if they open attachments and if they click on links within attachments. So in this case, I'm going to create a drive-by phishing campaign. And this is actually the campaigns we see the most in the wild. Step one would be to give the campaign a title because you want to be able to report back on the success of this campaign. The next step within a campaign would be to select the templates you want to use within this campaign. Now you can select templates in three different ways, either by language, so if you want a template in a local language, we support that, and again from May Danish language will be added here. You can select based on a category. So if you want a more corporate phishing email, a more technical phishing email, you can select the template here. And the third way, this is a very interesting one. This is the average failure rate. This is the click rate that we expect as Wombat from a specific campaign. Um, now what we do is we measure it. We currently have close to 2,000 customers worldwide and they run phishing campaigns on a monthly basis. So tens of millions of emails are sent. We get feedback from our customers and from their platforms on this. So we know how successful a campaign is going to be. So if you want to benchmark your organization against the average failure rate, you can do that. So you can, a select a campaign where we expect a 20 to 40 percent click rate. Um, as you see here, some of the campaigns have a uh, zero percent failure rate. These are our new campaigns that we've just added. Um, we, on a monthly basis, add new templates to the system based on the threats that we see in the wild. So this is continuously updated. Currently, there are over 100 different templates in here that you can use. So as we're on a webinar, I'm going to select the webinar registration and webinar inv invitation as templates. So I'm going to add these templates to the campaign. Now, you can add multiple templates. Now, the reason we add multiple templates to a single campaign is so that not all users will receive the same email at the same time. You can uh, randomize that and send them different templates. Each template can be individually modified. So if we look here, you can change the email address, the from email address, the reply to email address, the subject, 
um, I find that if you use the word your in the subject line that the open rate of the email increases and the URL part now the URL part is very important this is the information the employee will see when they hover over the link in the email so if I say for example do not click fish If they hover over this link in the email, they will see this URL. Now, if a user still clicks on that URL, I know they have not read what they saw on the screen. They are not thinking before they're acting. They are not analyzing the link or reading the link before clicking on it, and therefore they do require training. The content of the message can also be modified. So you can change the logo, you can put your own company logo in here. Um, it is not permitted to use other company logos. Um, so for example here, dear registrant, if we want to make it a more like a spear phishing email, uh, personally, we could add first name. So dear first name, thank you for registering. And again, the links in here is what will, if they hover over that, the link will appear on the bottom of the screen. And if they don't, if they still click on it, they do require training. So these are the templates that can be added. Next, you will select the users. And here we could select all users, or you could select the departments within your organization. I'm just going to target the finance department now and send them the phishing email. Now, what happens when they click on a link? Um, this is the first kind of education trigger within a phishing assessment. At that point in time, you can display them a teachable moment. Now, this is a message from you, uh, your company to your employees that yes, they received a test fish, um, they clicked on the link, this is something they shouldn't do, um, this is what you should have done and you can give some advice to your employees at that point in time so let me give you an example um, here's one I've prepared earlier so when users click on the link they'll receive a pop-up message now in this case uh, a customized message from Drower oh snap you've been fished don't worry, this is an authorized training simulation conducted by Drawer. We're here to help and give you some pointers to stay safe. So think before you click, look at what you're clicking on and get a second opinion. So this is a very short message to your users telling them what they did was not good and this is how they should behave. Follow All teachable moments can be modified so you can use your own company information, your own company logos, uh, your own text, you can build them in your own language. So, following this, we have what we call auto-enrollment. So the users that clicked on that link within the email, based on their behavior, you would want to educate them on email or on URLs or on another topic. So we can auto-enroll them onto in-depth training modules so in this case if the users click on that link I will auto enroll them onto the email security training module and the URL training module next step would be scheduling the campaign so you can schedule the campaign to start at a specific days or you can random schedule the campaign I like the random scheduling as what this does, it, it doesn't send all the emails out at once. It randomly selects users from the selected users group, randomly selects templates, and sends them out randomly spread out over a number of days. So in this case, about a thousand emails will be sent, about 200 each day, and they will be randomly sent. So this reduces chatter within the organization 
where users will talk to each other and say, did you receive that email? And uh, don't click on the link, it's a test. So you don't want that to happen. So random scheduling is very important. Um, next, what we do is we check the client on the email. So we, let, we check the plugins that are used within the email client. Um, so if the email uses Java, Silverlight, QuickTime, we will check if they use the latest version. If they don't use the latest version of the plugins, we will note that as a possible vulnerability and report on that. Next step would be to create the campaign and send the campaign out or schedule the campaign. So back to platform. The training modules. So we've seen that we can create assessments, um, either knowledge assessments or uh, behavioral assessments. And based on those assessments, we can assign training modules. Now, currently we have, I think we recently added another one, there's 21 training modules in our system. And we have three more ready for release in the May release. So we're continuously developing new training modules and updating our current training modules. So I'm not going to show all training modules because we would be here for another, <laughs> at least another couple of hours. So I'm going to just show you the email security training module. Now, all training modules can be customized and modified to your company standards. So we start the training module with an introduction and this introduction has to come from you as an organization. So you can build this page or multiple pages to start the training. So this is the way our training looks and works. It is interactive. The user will have to read the screen and read information that we display. So we explain what an email is, who what to look at the sender, uh, what to look at in the subject line, check logos and names within the email, check links within the email, check the signatures. Now this continues and we show them a couple of examples and teach them what to be aware of. Then at about half or quarter into the training, what we'll do is we'll give them the first assessment. Now this is an example of a gamified assessment. So in this case, they will receive three emails over three rounds. They'll gain or lose points, and they have two minutes to examine each individual email. So this is what we warn them for possible traps. We warn them what to look out for, um, careful, Etc. And then we start the assessment. So now they have two minutes to assess this email. So they need to look at the content, read the content, go through the email, and then decide if this is safe or unsafe. Now in this case, I think this is unsafe. Um, fill out a survey to win $50. This is a financial incentive in a subject line to entice you to open the email. So that is unsafe. Um, links within emails. So surveys.com.giveaways.com. Now this URL is unsafe. So I'll click unsafe. Um, the name and uh, job title, there's nothing wrong with that. So that's safe. So I scored the maximum points, 60 points in this email. Next, next email, and I'll just go through this quick. Let me see. What have I, down the bottom.
Oh, lost a life there. <laughs> Bank of North America, that's safe. After completing the assessment, they will get immediate feedback on the assessment. So they missed one item, they made one mistake, and this is the example here. So always give immediate feedback, and you can see that our training modules are very interactive. Now, as mentioned, I'm not going to show you all our training modules, but what I would like to give you is the opportunity to see the training modules for yourself. So if you are interested in evaluating our training modules and taking a look at every individual training modules, um, please contact Christian at Drower and uh, he will arrange for access to the platform and to the different training modules. So, so Terry, after this session, uh, I'll be sending everyone an email with the recording and also the question whether they want to take a look at uh, the product uh, on the training sessions. And it's just simply answering yes, and I'll make sure that happens. Yes. Um, what I'd also like to offer is uh, not just access to the training modules. Um, I know this has been a kind of a very quick and brief overview of the platform. Um, if they would like a more in-depth uh, demo of the platform and a more interactive session, um, also please contact you and I'm happy to hop on a call and arrange a personal uh, introduction and demo together uh, with uh, Drower. Thank you very much. Okay, Christian, um, it's 10 to 10 now. I think we'll leave 10 minutes for some questions. Yeah, I have one question here. Is there, uh, I'm translating this, is there like a best practice for how to actually implement security awareness or is it just you know, go as, sh shoot by the hip or go as you please? Um, let me uh, open a, another slide there. Yes, we do have a best practices guide on how to implement security awareness and how to implement a strategy within your organization. Um, this is an example of um, a training strategy uh, with an organization where you start with, of course, your pre-launch communication. Um, this is where you inform the stakeholders of the organization uh, what you're going to do and why you're going to do it. Then following that, in month one, we would do a baseline cyber strength assessment. So this is a knowledge assessment just to baseline the organization and to baseline your users. So you have a starting point. And it's very important that you report against this because what you want to see at the end of your program is a change in behavior and you want to be able to report that. First thing we do would be a baseline um, threat sim or behavioral assessment. Following that, we start our education program. So we're in month two now. Um, we start off with security essentials and security essentials for exec executives. Then on a four to six week basis, we recommend you do a phishing campaign or a phishing assessment. Based on the outcome of these assessments, we'd automatically assign training to the users that failed the assessment. So these are the first auto-enrolled trainings. Then after that, we recommend these trainings. So here we assign the email and security and uh, social engineering training to the users that fail this campaign. But we recommend that this training module will also be available for all users within the organization. So even the users that don't, uh, that do pass the assessment. Um, so this is, in general, this is compulsory, so it's assigned and made compulsory for the user to do that. These are voluntary training that are available. And again, this continues throughout the year and, of course, utilize the, the fish alarm and the reporting 
within the platform. Um, what I can do is uh, we have a document um, called the, uh, our best practices document. Um, I can make this available through Drawer. So if you are interested in a security awareness campaign and program and how to implement that within your organization, please contact Christian and he'll make that document available to you. Thank you very much. I have another question here. Um, if an end user it will tag Wombat training emails as spam, will they no longer receive the emails and would you be able to see that in your portal? Um, that is a question that I haven't heard before. This is a new one, a very good one. Um, I will go back to uh, our support and uh, give you feedback on that question. Um, good question. Um, I would not, uh, I can't answer it uh, immediately now on the phone. That makes sense. Uh, I've got another one here. If you've got time for one more. Yep, I've got, I've got time. Uh, how is the platform licensed? Um, the platform is licensed per email address per year. So uh, it depends on how many employees you want to educate within your organization. Um, so we have customers that have 10,000 employees and that's a they only about a thousand have an email address or a company email address so they would uh, purchase a thousand user license so it's based on the email addresses within the organization okay so do you recommend that everybody gets the the uh, the education or should should uh, should you kind of target it by certain groups or how how do you see that um, I believe and I strongly believe that everyone needs education um, not just on email security and URL are not just phishing it's also to do with general behavior within the organization so physical security how do you act uh, when you're opening a door we all know that security doors you need a car to go through but if I stand there with two cups of coffee in my hand there's always going to be someone that's going to open the door for me. So this is behavior that we also need to look at. So I believe strongly that everyone within the organization requires training. Yeah, that also makes sense. Okay, Terry, there are no more questions at this point in time. I'm just going to take the, um, the presentation back here. Uh, so okay. so uh, what I would like to say is uh, thank you very much for for the the help in showing the platform, and then I'll say in in, in Danish, mange tak fordi at I alle sammen lyttede med her. Som sagt så udsender vi en optagelse af det her som spørgsmål om du har lyst til at prøve det eller snakke nærmere om det, så det er bare at svare ja på det. Um, og uh, så er der sådan set ikke mere at gøre her. Så tak for os på den her gang.